Graham here at Neat. And today I want to take you through how we set up a resource account for a Microsoft Teams Room device. So we'll show you different ways. One is through the GUI to get the basic account set up. And then we will add extra features or functionality and processing rules through PowerShell. It's the only way it can be done. Or you could actually do it all from PowerShell. So let's jump into my Office 365 Admin Center. So you'll need admin rights to see the Office 365 Admin Center. So all I simply do is want to come down to our show all and we want resources and we go to rooms and equipment. All we simply do now is add a room. So we can call this whatever we want. Let's call this bananas as one of our meeting rooms. Have an alias, uh, capacity. This will be important later when we have things like um, people counting available uh, to us. And that is it. You can put a location and phone number in as well, but we simply click save at the bottom. So that's now creating this resource account. And the other key thing is once you have a resource account, because we want to sign in as a resource account, we also need to give it a username and password. So that's now done. Um, you could also look at some booking options here while we're, while we're just here. And for example, you may want to extend this to maybe 365. So people, people can book out a room in advance in uh, up to one year, for example. So I like to do that in case you have a recurring meeting. So once we've created our bananas meeting room, we can then go back to our active users over here on the left. And we want to search for bananas. There it is there. And we want to hit the little key button to reset the password. And again, you can define this. I'll just do this as an example. And Microsoft suggest one here. So now we have a resource account with a username and password. So we can now log into a Microsoft Teams room, for example, with these details. The one thing you will need to do is, depending on your policies, is that you might have to provide your phone number to authenticate that this account is good. And let me show you what that looks like. So I like to do this in a private browser because I'm signed in here as my admin credential. So let's bring up a private browser. And obviously don't forget to remember your username and password. So all I usually do here is go to outlook.office.com, pop in my credentials. So this is the saved username and password. And I pop that in. So this is one step, you, you know, you can't do this on a device. It must be done through a browser, for example. So you'll get a, uh, a pop-up depending on your security policy. Uh, you might have to put in your cell phone number. So we know the account is all good. We don't have two-factor authentication, etc. So we know this is ready to go and sign in on a device. It shouldn't have any issues. So that's, uh, that's a good start. And I always like to do this. Test the account in a browser first. The other one, obviously, is we can go to Teams. Because we're doing Teams rooms, make sure you can sign into Teams and it's happy as well. So these are nice few steps to ensure that the account is working, it's good, it's ready to go. And yet, as you can see, this hasn't loaded. And if we look at the uh, address bar, license error. The user isn't licensed. We haven't added a license. Now this is key because um, obviously you need to have a license for Teams Rooms. So what we'll do is we'll just get rid of this window. Again, there is trials obviously you can set up and that's what I'm gonna show you here. So we go back to our uh, account. Well, what we could do is, you know, look at our device uh, and we can look at licenses and we can apply that license that we have available. So as you can see, it's used Teams Exploratory. That's given it its free test license, shall we say. However, we want Microsoft Teams Room standard. Now, mine are all assigned in, it, in this uh, tenant here. You can sign up for a 30 day trial. So that's a great way to test out Microsoft Teams Rooms. You don't need to purchase the, um, the licenses, you can get a 30 day trial on the Teams Room standard. Also, you can use any of your other sort of licenses that are available, but as best practice is to use Teams Room standard or even maybe Teams Room premium. So once you have that assigned, then you'll be able to then successfully sign into a Microsoft Teams Room device. So that is the first part of the setup. We have an account, we can sign in, that's all good, it's licensed. What we now need to do is set some rules around there. And let's bring up PowerShell and I'll show you this. 
Now, in terms of PowerShell, we actually want Exchange Online. That's where we want to configure uh, everything for what we want to do. So we can actually come down here and then go to Exchange, and that will open up the Exchange Admin Center. Now, one of the new features is up on the top corner here. Uh, I'll just get rid of this. Is in the top right, we have PowerShell. So we can run it directly from a browser now. Or you can install the uh, Exchange Online. Uh, obviously, you need a Azure subscription to run this as well, depending on what tenancy you have set up. So what I will do, I will just connect with uh, Exchange Online. As you can see, you've got to have an Azure subscription, so it's got somewhere to store some a uh, little bit of data. What I have is Exchange Online installed. So this is, again, installed from the classic side of the admin center. And you get a hybrid, and you can get the Exchange uh, Online PowerShell module from here. So you can download that and run that. Now, I have this here running. So once you've got that installed, you can double-click on the icon on your desktop, and here we have our commands. So what we want to do is, as it says above, we want to connect to Exchange Online and our user principal name. And I obviously want to use the administrator account that I've got permissions to do on here. So let's just sign in with this account. And then you'll get a pop-up for your authentication. So you'll be asked for your password. Obviously, I don't see the screen, and you don't want to see my password either. But that will be there for you. And you uh, pop in your credentials. And once you're signed in, and you've done your two-factor authentication, etc., that will then log in, as you can see above, it's signing in, we're all good. And we're now ready to apply, apply some commands. So I've pre-populated some of the features that I want for this uh, calendar processing. So for example, I've now put the identity of my meeting room in there. And I want to add the, the organizer um, information to the uh, invite. Delete attachments, yeah. Uh, delete comments, false. So anything in the body of the message I want to keep, because... I might have a you know, guest join meeting. I need to be able to read the message body. And the same for subject. I want to keep the subject uh, there so we know what it is. And also then remove uh, any private property. And I've got that as false. Um, so that is, you know, uh, yeah. and then finally process uh, external meeting. So I hit enter and away we go. We make these changes. So now then the mailbox is able to function in a, in a nice manner. You could add mail tips as well, but you could do that through the admin center. So now we can also check what we've done and make sure everything has been applied. So I've got the get calendar processing, my identity uh, of the bananas, and the format list of all the attributes I want to be able to look at. So I simply hit enter on these. And this is now going to say, yep, uh, the identity is bananas. And it, these all these settings are in place. Now, one thing we can do, if there's a other configuration you want within the mailbox, we can look at those commands on the Microsoft documentation site. So let's just bring that up and show you, and I'll put that in the link below. So all we need to do is jump back to our web browser, and we'll open up a new tab, and we'll go to docs.microsoft.com. And all we need to do is put in here is set calendar processing commands. And you can see it's come up nice and quick. We search. And we have now a list of commands that we can use. So you can look at the whole list of uh, everything. So uh, it tells you what is available. Uh, so the identity, you can use a number of different formats. Name, alias, full email, etc. Many different ways you can do that. Um, but actually, if you want to know what to set... So that, that's one of the first things, is the set calendar processing. We can scroll down, select that, and then here are all the options for the mailbox that you can do. So this is when the message is processed. This is what happens, and then we scroll down. That gives you an example of each one. Uh, so you can do that. So there are some differences between a standard user mailbox and a resource mailbox. So uh, again, resource mailbox is the appropriate setting here rather than a user account uh, that you assign. So each one of these uh, tells you and explains what is uh, for each one. So there we have it. That is how we create a resource account, uh, give it a license, set a password, and then check on the web to sign in that it's all okay. We can then take that to our device. And my uh, best friend to do that is Microsoft.com. 
device login. So when you have a new system out of the box in Teams mode, you get a, I think it's a nine digit code, pop that in here and you can sign it in. So that's if you're in front of the device. I will show you another video on how we sign in our Microsoft Teams rooms on Android through uh, remote sign-in through the Teams admin center. So check that video out at another time. Any questions, let me know below. Thanks very much.